This, the story that they tell, it can talk about the ups and downs of life. $4.5 million earned in a decade, half million dollars buying product, getting your rug pulled out from under you, dying for 20 years. And then everybody goes, oh, that's pretty dang sad and dark. No, I won. This is it, I won. <laughs> everybody knew who I was. I saw people follow me all the time. We always had everything on the line. It's either win or lose, live or die. Hands up, or I shoot you. With a genuine piss shooter. As pest collectors kind of look at what they got in their attic or on their shelves and looking at that now, what advice do you have for pest collectors today? For pest collectors today, I say, I've been telling everybody, buy what you really want that thing you think is too expensive, you need to pony up because it's gonna go up a lot. There's new people are coming real fast. Is it a growing hobby, would you think, in general? Or just, are you thinking because of the movie, or? Yeah, well, back when we were doing things in the 90s, we grew the hobby from about 2,500 to 10,000. Uh, right now, the hobby stands at about four, maybe five, I don't know. Just that's perception, not accuracy. And I, I figure it'll go up to 12, 15, and it could go higher. This uh, character is an exciting character. Um, and I think that once Pez Corporation makes Pez Outlaw, it's going to be even bigger. Should be the mascot, right? That's the goal. The is mascot. To, Steve's goal is to eventually have you know, Pez Corporation make their own Pez Outlaw dispenser and right. partner with him to, to release that. That, that, would be the, that would be the dream. What I learned was, if you're looking through old Pez from your attic, the ones with no feet that don't have stand-up, that's the ones that are really vintage, so those ones you can actually sell for a good amount. For Amy and Brian, I was curious about the genesis of the film and working alongside Steve to make this thing happen. Just tell me a little bit about how this project got going for you guys and what it was like to shoot it. I mean, we're always looking for like, uh, kind of fun, quirky stories. And when we read the headlines of Steve's adventure, um, we knew it was something that was right up our alley. Um, and, you know, just all the adventures he had. And he'd written for 20 years in his blog about, about all of these adventures. But then when we went out and met him on the farm, um, met his family, um, we realized that it wasn't just a headline, that there was a, a lot of heart there. And, and we knew, like, instantly when we met him that, that uh, this would, you know, make for a great story and a great film for us to to tell his story and the feelings equally mutual i had met a lot of people uh there was a big oscar winning producer and some other writer and warner brothers and on and on and that blew up and i almost went down the toilet again and then i met him and you just know and and amy and you know when you meet family you know steve what's it been like for you premiering this at south by southwest and seeing your story told on the I, what, what, what's that yeah. feeling like he yeah i mean what's your experience here he hasn't seen the movie ever yet. um never no. will okay. he won't yeah he it's you can you can explain why if if you'd like i've, I've tried to convince him for a while and then i gave up on trying to <laughs> um i compartmentalize my life i have to go back to being a farmer and taking care of the babies and my horses this guy i can bring him out and we can do and we can do these things and i love it but I can't carry him, I can't. He's, he's not something I can have as a, a part of my real world. The Pez outlaw. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, him, yeah. yeah, yeah. Him. Well, that's gonna be a unique situation for you guys as filmmakers and the subject uh, of your film. So he's yeah, unique. for sure. It, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, it, it, it makes sense. Like at first I was kind of like, but he'll eventually watch it, but I get it. He's, you know, he'll get to in his head and it's hard to watch yourself on screen anyway when you're, it's your whole story, you know? And, but everyone in his family seen it, all of his closest friends, and he, he told us that your barometer of whether the movie's good will be their response, right? And it's absolutely correct. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't care about win, win, money, money anymore. This, the story that they tell, it can talk about the ups and downs of life. $4.5 million earned in a decade, half million dollars buying product, getting your rug pulled out from under you, dying for 20 years. And then everybody goes, oh, that's pretty dang sad and dark. No, I won. This is it, I won. <laughs> this is what's beautiful about being able to premiere the movie here at South by Southwest and have Steve here is because the actual 
premiering of the movie is the end goal for the main character. Like having his story told was the whole goal. And so it's like, it's our goal. It's, his, it's a mutual goal. And we're just all winning in having this movie in front of audiences. So. It's good. I we're think all winning. We're all winning. We're all winning. Yeah. Yes. I think Absolutely. what also inspired us about Steve's story is, is, you know, that he didn't give up, that he had these, you know, crazy things happen to him that took life to a pretty low place, but then he persevered. And even with just getting his story out there, like the goal for 20 years of, of telling his story and sharing it with the world in, in a movie form, uh, like has, you know, is finally kind of coming to a realization. Um, and, and seeing that, like even when we met him, seeing how hard he'd been pushing to do this uh, made us, um, you know, a lot of times you have to go to people and convince them to, you know, to tell their story or to, you know, be a mo- be in a movie. But Steve was eager to do it, and we collaborated throughout the process. And just watching, you know, and helping to have his, you know, his goals realized as well was was really fun. And Steve, what was it like for you to recount these memories, good good and bad? I don't mind. I don't mind telling the story. I carry no uh, first twenty year journey, right? All right, first five ten years angry. Five first five angry as hell. And then I calmed and calmed, and now I, I don't hate anybody. I, and, and this is just a blessing. Meeting them and doing this with them, it's been an adventure all of its own, and I, I hardly recommend it for anybody that might have it. I met a guy last night real quick, and the guy was telling me he got stomped on by a big corporation, and then they expect you to die. Well, if you won't take your deads and you fight, you can win. Is, is it a little surreal to kind of recount this stuff? And it is. Back, like, a different I do lifetime that, ago? It, it don't matter. He takes his glasses off then. And then and you don't it have don't to matter. see what's going on around you, and you can just... I'm visiting your world. I visited his world. Uh, I met wonderful people. Um, I, this is not my world, but I respect your world, and I, and I really want to give you everything you need. I want to do the perfect interview as a challenge to actually do it right for once. How are we, yeah. how, how's he doing? <laughs> this might be my favorite interview of the weekend, so thank you guys so much for coming by.